guess we could just get started because this may be a very quick meeting. Um, so uh, reworking the OKD base repository. Um, Brian had started making some PRs, uh, I think, and, and we'll continue making PRs. And the gist is that we make PRs to make modifications to the current repository as it's going to get moved over to the new location so that it meets the the watermark of uh, Red Hat folks who uh, had put their efforts into it uh, to get started. Uh, meeting docs. Uh, I'm going to start posting the like making individual um, uh, MD files in the new repo for each meeting so that folks can just navigate uh, to a particular meeting and see the respective um, uh, notes and agenda. And then as I upload the videos, the description will now have a link to that particular um, meetings document. Awesome. Um, I, I had been just doing like a generic um, paragraph about OKD, but we'll actually be able to specialize now. Um, website styling, Brian, is still working with Brandon, I think. I, there was some back and forth in chat, but I don't know if they um, yep. finished in that or not. It's I think that it's still a work in progress, but Brandon is still yeah. is still doing some work on it and um, will probably have a proposal site for us, or not probably not this week, but when Brian comes back, they'll have something for us to look at um, to see if he's, he's, he's forked it and is playing with it and coming up with some suggestions so I think we'll review it in the docs meeting um, and then present it to the group or the docs meeting loves it or whatever well you can figure out the process for accepting it um, sure. but it is the work is being done excellent and that's very useful work um, uh, issues are there let's see there are five issues but these are all sort of old ones um, in terms of the OKD.io, nothing new there. Um, and pull requests, there are no pull requests for website content. Um, new business, so this is probably gonna take the, the, the most of the time to this. I don't know if folks noticed, but um, Vadim actually um, stepped away from OKD development for a short period of time. Uh, he's um, put in a lot of extra hours and wants to maintain a good work-life balance and community contributor life balance type thing. And so I think it's incumbent upon this group and the larger group to come up with a contributor's guide. That's actually like if you want to contribute in terms of code or debugging or anything like that, this is what you need to do because mm -hmm. we we've talked now for a long time about how having it rest on the shoulders of Vadim is just not uh, it's not tenable for the future. Yeah, I totally get that. support. Yeah. So and I'm I throwing out the idea that we do a contributors guide. I think that that is awesome. I think we could probably look at um, maybe even the Kubernetes contributor guide, um, and we've got a few other uh, sample guides out there at. at I think Stack Rocks and Ansible have nice ones as well. Um, that would be an awesome thing to do. I think the other piece of the coin besides the contributor guide is the build process. Um, yep. And currently, we can't build our own distros, you know, our own images and stuff. And I think longer term for the viability of OKD as a standalone open source project, we need to figure that out. Um, and it, and I'm, you know, I'll have a conversation um, with the folks internally, but, I, you know, finding a place where we can do, set up a CI, CD process um, for us and manage it ourselves um, as an, as it, like, I don't want to be an open source purist, but, you know, as a true open source project building our own stuff. There's a, and I don't know if Michael Burke has heard it, but that the term operate first group inside of, um, Red Hat is a whole initiative that's supporting other open source projects with um, hosted um, OpenShift um, that, you know, I've been having a conversation. I have a conversation with Karsten Wade tomorrow, and I'm going to broach the subject of them, of, of somehow 
using that um, initiative inside of Red Hat or OKD. But what that means is we really do need the contributor's guide and we need people who will take on the role of building it because um, I'm always concerned that at some juncture the engineering resources will get pulled. Um, we're, we're beholden to, to Red Hat and I say that as, as a Red Hatter, we're beholden to them to do it. So that is the, the risk for us. The other alternative is maybe pushing it over um, into Fedora land um, and building and seeing what they have for resources too. But I think the contributor guide is definitely something we need. Um, and I, I would, there's another um, phraseology um, called a contributor uh, contribution ladder, um, which the Kubernetes um, contributor group has worked very hard on of like how you get to become a maintainer um, or a, you know, a maintainer and maybe a builder is a term that we need to. Um, so if the operate first conversation doesn't work out um, in terms of finding a place to build OKD ourselves, um, and that's a lot of work, um, and down the, the push, maybe um, Dato, Neil, and the team over there might have hosting capabilities. But um, I think that is something we definitely need to, uh, the first step is the contributor guide and the contribution ladder portion of that. Yeah. And then and now, what we need actually, because if we want to ask folks to provide resources, we need a clear sense of what resources we need to ask for to be able to do yeah. builds and stuff. So. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's time um, it, because we're, I mean, even, you know, we have this conversation over and over, and I was talking with with someone earlier today about um, we've probably been through a half dozen, maybe a dozen different Vadims over the nine years that OpenShift has had an open source version of itself, and they always move on. It is like the greatest training ground, and they always get promoted. Um, it's a great training ground, but we lose them. Um, and, you know, there's a half dozen people now still inside of Red Hat who, you know, started out as the OKD technical liaison. Um, so that's that's kind of important. So if anyone's watching this recording, that I think is really the the roadmap vision that that um, we have to discuss as a group how we do our own builds and how we host this um, separately if we want to be viable as a through open source project. Michael, we've been kind of dominating this conversation. What are your thoughts? I, mean, I can certainly help out. I can, you know, kind of look at, definitely, definitely sounds like a good idea. Considering. And here's Neil. 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 Speak of the devil. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Neil. Hello. Hey, 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 what's going on, both of you? Is that a two for one, Neil? Yeah. Two for one. Yeah, uh, our system here uses is Zoom instead of BlueJeans, so I can't use the fancy conference equipment, but here we are anyway. Okay, cool. Well, um, we were just talking about creating a contributor guide. And, oh. Um, yeah. So we and a country inc incorporating a contributor ladder um, similar to what the Kubernetes crew has done and, you know, easily lifted and ported, I think, um, for us. But the other piece of the conversation um, that I was, I br brought up too, is that I think for the, and I, we've talked about it at the larger group before, about creating our own build process and hosting our own build process. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a couple of initiatives inside of Red Hat that I'm going to talk to to see if we can get space on the cloud. It's called Operate First. Um, oh. And and they're helping open source projects do their builds and testing. So I was going to broach the subject of them um, helping us. Um, so there's, if you, I, think, I think they even have a landing page. I think it's more um, about the ops side of things rather than um, hosting and building processes, but it's a possibility. But the other possibility is finding um, someone with some cloud resources um, that we can leverage um, to do our own build processes. Um, is this building OKD itself, building the documentation site, all of the above? 
building OKD itself and all of the, okay. and the yeah. I think that's you know, I think it's time um, to to start to start doing that. And um, and the reason your ears were burning, Neil, is because I mentioned that you know that Dato might be a um, a place or Fedora Land might be a place where we could do that. But it would be mm -hmm. you know something something we could think we should start talking about. Um, yeah. So I don't know what you have for resources, but and I'm not going to put you guys on the spot, but. Um, <laughs> well, and I think, you know, as I was saying, I think first we need to figure out as a group what resources actually needed before anyone could commit any resources. Yeah. That's the big I don't want to go and say I need undefined amounts of stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a conversation doesn't go that usually well. goes very poorly. Yes, yeah. exactly. So that's where we are with that. So I'll add that as a task. I will, um, for all of us, pull your ideas and then um, I'll bring this to the general group uh, next week and we'll start putting together just um, a guide in Git. People can make merge requests and uh, we'll have maybe a, a group of approvers that, um, you know, maybe three people that are approvers or something like that. Any one of them can approve just so that we have some semblance of organization to it. And we'll just keep building on the contributors guide and then we will, um, I'll reach out to Vadim and and Christian as well and maybe see if I can get a meeting with the three or and whoever else wants to join to have a, a conversation about what actually resource wide, resource wise is needed to build it, right? Um, and then we'll go from there. So any other thoughts on this? Um, so I don't know enough about the build process. Is it that we need somewhere to run containers? Is it that we need VMs? Is it like what what level of of computing resource do we do we ideally want? I I I don't have the answer to that. Um, okay. I think that's the question we might have to interview Vadim. Um, with the intent of creating a, you know, not just a contributor guide, but a builder's guide um, for for OKD, um, you know, and so then we might know what the requirements were because it's pretty, you know, we're just being, we're part of the CI/CD build process for OpenShift, and it's just an output um, of that right now. So, you know, and that's a pretty intense build um, mm -hmm. process. So, you know, do we need that whole thing? probably a good fair portion of it. And I don't know what those resources are. I, I never have gotten my head around um, that part of it. So um, yeah, so there you go. All right, any other thoughts on this particular topic? All right, and then moving on, uh, our task list is a uh, machine OS uh, repo discussion. I didn't make it to the last two main meetings I've been out, um, but I don't think that that actually came up. Diane, did that come up in the last main meeting, uh, machine OS repository stuff? I don't mm -hmm. think it did. No. Nah, so I'll make sure it makes it to that. Um, move community docs out of the community repo. Brian's going to do that. Uh, try registering with Matrix. Um, guides formats. Um, how are we on the guide stuff? Moving guys. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Diane. I was just going to say I have heard um, from the Ansible community that they've had much success with Matrix. So okay. um, I think we have to do a little bit more um, practice. Um, and I did it before we 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 um, wrote it down or something. Um, I, I reached out to the Carol Chen and some of the folks who run the community around that, and they have been very successful and happy because it integrates both with Google Chat and Slack. Um, so, so yeah. I, so do do we have anybody here who had trouble registering who can talk about? Okay. Yeah. Which home server did you try registering with? Um. Well, I. I have to go back and try it. It was like three weeks ago. I don't even remember. Gotcha. So, I'm, so what I'm saying is I will um, make another valiant attempt um, 
and I will go back through the email thread or the docs and try it again. I think we all need to make another valiant attempt and, and come back. And I will have some downtime. I'm I'm away the next two weeks um, business in Israel, um, but that does mean I have like a 15 hour plane plane ride to read shit and um and and test again. But I, I think from what I can, if I sniff the wind, um, Matrix is kind of getting some good groundswell of adoption out there in other open source communities, and it might just be our or my um, predilection to just keep the easy Slack channels. So um, Slack. I will. Slack is not necessarily easy to onboard onto if you're not already using Slack <clears throat> either. Yeah, Correct. and one of the, one of the um, I'll turn this around because it looks like awkward when I don't speak out of the, like, the voice of God or whatever. Um, but uh, one of the, the the bigger challenges, even I as an experienced Slack user have a problem with is like pretty much everybody's method of getting onto Slack is unique because Slack itself is not designed for open collaboration. It's designed for closed workspace stuff. And that's, and, and we run into this impedance mismatch a lot. I mean, the Kubernetes people are just kind of adapted around it because most of them are are people that are paid to work on it for their jobs. And it's not, they're not really community centric in that regard. Uh, and so they just kind of are okay with whatever. But like as someone who like is community first and then company man second in this pro in this space, um, it is kind of bad that we that that we have that problem. And I, I'd like for us to have a much more open, you know, community uh, first, you know, default um, interaction model for the OKD project. So Neil, what would you say is the the best link for people to use to find out about getting into the matrix channel? That we um, do we have a doc of any kind or just use the Fedora the do doc? I don't have a doc offhand, although if you go to element.io, they have uh, they have a getting started guide for on their website. Um, mm -hmm. element.io slash get dash started and it kind of helps you figure out how to get started or whatever. Um, but I think, uh, I don't know, you might, someone might want to check with Marie Norden in Fedora. I think she was working on a doc for people to get started using the Fedora project matrix server. And that mm -hmm. might actually be a good starting point. Since, yeah. um, our, our matrix room is hosted there. So, um, yeah, I think that's some synergy and whatever. Yeah. I think maybe that's if I, I mean I know I'm I'm ridiculously busy so if you can track Marie down um, Neil you I think she yeah. knows she knows who I am but she knows you better um, <laughs> that, that um, and then maybe bring that to next week's meeting and re ask everybody to give it an attempt um, sure I think would yeah, be helpful um, I will not be there um, but so I I just I will be hosting a gathering in Tel Aviv. Um, there won't be any, I won't be able to back you up on that, but I think we need to, I did, uh, cause I was worried that we were ditching it too soon um, or there was a lot of grumbling. So I reached out to a couple of other open source projects and I don't know if you know, Carol Chen from Ansible or um, Robin Bergeon. They were both, yeah, that Matrix is really, helpful for them. So um, I, I, I value their opinions. There might also be someone in the OSPO group at Red Hat um, that is a matrix expert. So I'll ask there again today too um, if, if they have um, some stuff. So and forward it, great. forward it to Jamie and see if we can get that going. Yeah. Do you have the link to the um, matrix server on fedora so that i we have it in the yeah i don't think we have that in the docs here chat.fedoraproject.org okay that's, that's the uh that's the the and front you, page yeah right. we can right. throw that in it's chat.fedoraproject.org and yep. you just yep. sign and if you want to link to the room directly yeah, that's like flush. Okay, 
storeproject.org. I think that's the that's the correct thing here. That's the one I was looking for. If we can put both of those in the HackMD, I will put them in my test this stuff gist, gist file. Uh, I think that's the right one. Things to do when you have Wi-Fi on a plane. Um, yeah, that should be right. Yeah, okay, D. colon for project.org. Yeah, that's correct. Got it. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, you want me to put those in the HackMD or something? I thought I, I filed, just put them in, I actually, filed right it now. in an issue. Oh, you already did. Cool. Yeah. I just put them in the, yeah. And so, I, I, and maybe we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll create a uh, discussion item out of it or something like that, or actually put it up in the website and people can try doing it themselves. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, put it on the OKDIO website. Uh, any other thoughts on this one? On this topic? I think we just go forward, test, and see what we got. All right, and uh, that brings us to our task lists, uh, back to our task list. So guides, Daniel. Yes. So um, the it, it looks like the format I proposed for the guides. Uh, people seem generally positive about that. Um, so would my next step to be write up a document in our documentation about the form of the documentation for the guides? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, where where should that go? Do we have a docs about docs section or in contributing? Uh, we, or do, like where? we do not yet. I, what I would do is, um, um, hmm. I would say, let's see. You could put it as a you could put it as a page within the guides folder oh, itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, just as the like guides read me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. I think that makes sense. Does anyone have a different thought? Does is would there be a different way to do it? But yeah, I think actually because there isn't actually a read me in the guides yet so maybe you could create the readme sure okay and uh and then yeah and then put in like the format there yeah okay sounds good and then we should be ready to start assigning issues out to people who said that they would rewrite guides saying Excellent. here's the format here's what we want it to look like go go forth and update your guide yes i love it cool okay all right we'll do Excellent. I think that's it. For uh, that. Security liaison. I reached out again and haven't heard anything. I'm going to try a different way. It might be that that the person who volunteered is not getting on Slack, so maybe I'll send a uh, LinkedIn message and we'll see if we can get that. And then that's it. Uh, any other upcoming events besides KubeCon EU? Um, well, at KubeCon EU, there will be. Um an OpenShift Commons gathering on May 17th. So if any of you are Neil from Dato or anybody's coming, um, both Christian and Vadim are going to come and there's going to be at least a lightning talk on OKD there. And um, they will also be um, part of a presentation on MicroShift because MicroShift, um, which is in, you know, POC or tech preview, I don't know what the nomenclature is, um, uses um, OKD, so I'm going to make them be part of that talk too. So there'll be a lot of OKD on the menu at the gathering, um, and depending on how all things go, we may even find a room to do um, an OKD working group um, meet meet up there as well. But so just so stay I had an idea. I just wanted to quickly float. If Red Hat productizes that and it stops being based on OKD at some point. Uh, I propose that we call our version micro KD. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that would be good. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there are plans um, in the offing, and um, we will hear about them at the gathering in, um, in, in May. So I think everything now is part of the emerging tech um, group 
at the office of the CTO, um, and two of the guys that are the core engineers on it are based in Spain. Um, so they're luckily Ricardo and, and Miguel are both going to be the speakers for that. Um, and then we'll make Vadim and uh, Vadim and Christian answer any OKD or core OS OS issues because I think there will be some com conversations around that. Because if I'm if I listen to Sally O'Malley at the last OKD meeting, it's using um, a variant again, yet again of um, RHEL core OS. Or did I get that wrong? Um, uh, instead of Fedora core OS, I'm not sure. I, I believe it is. I, I gotta watch that video again. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. Yeah. There's there's so many variants of variants of things that um, I I don't want to misspeak for anyone who's watching this recording. Um, just go back to the last working group meeting and watch the presentation or look at the slides that Sally O'Malley shared. That will be. She she is the definitive person on that. Um, all right. Do we have anything else uh, before we uh, sign off? Yeah. I'm wondering if there is a way or someone, if there's a way to go through the docs.okd.io site to make sure everything that's in there is applicable. Right. Like sort of a triage to see anything that needs to get pulled out that is not. Yeah. I think it yeah. came up, I think, last. This last meeting, there were a couple of operators. Right. Cluster logging right. operator is in the docs, but yeah. it's not in OKD. So let's, at the next meeting, what we'll do is, because we'll have more people at the next docs meeting. At the next docs meeting, let's actually, like, assign out um, different, you know, tasks to different folks and just, like, as a group, just say, okay, in the next two weeks, you take this section, you take this section, you take this section. You know the people who are really knowledgeable about um, OKD and documentation, um, and I think that's a great idea. Is just like comb through it, and yeah. and and bring to your attention anything that needs to be removed or yeah. modified. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. There was one other thing. Um, speaking of triages, um, that we talked about is hosting another um, testing and deployment OKD summit, um, and so I just wanted to put that on our radars um, and. Basically, um, I would, if, if we're going to pick a date, I would, from my schedule, it would have to be post KubeCon EU. We could promote it at post, at KubeCon EU at, at those events. But I'd like this group and maybe Jamie drive it through next week um, and see if there's a date. And then I'll just create, like I did again, another hop in um, event and we can promote that. And maybe one of the subtopics, Michael. Um, could be uh, a, a, a room for people to triage the documentation. Mm, uh, yeah. Okay. So, but that would be probably sometime the end of May, beginning of June. So if you need something prior to that, we better do it ourselves. Okay. Maybe we could do a higher level one now, not have to go worry about going line from line. Yeah. Yeah. And then exactly. in May or June, yeah, do a deeper dive. Yeah, it's perfect. All righty, right. we did that in a half Anything an hour. Else? Yeah, not bad. Of course, we're missing one of our primary people. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you also got an unexpected. You got an an unusual guest for one. So yes, this is true. You are take one and you lose no one. <laughs> That's okay. Well, All right. Is there I'll anything go. else that we have? Yeah. So Neil, to... yeah. So Neil, just an ask if you reach out to Marie Norton um, and she's writing a guide, um, CC Jamie and I uh, on any response or forward it to us so that we can make sure. Sure. Then yeah, I'll, I'll have. Let... Oh. I'll check with her and, and have you guys in the loop. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for all your efforts on that, Neil. That's much appreciated. Well, all right. Take care, guys. See you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Bye-bye.